Hey guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name's Colin, this is Colin Talks Crypto. In this video, I'm probably going to shock you with what I'm going to say. I have just repurchased all of my EOS tokens and I made a profit doing so. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why and how. And this is a 100% technical purchase, 100% based on technical indicators, because I didn't even see myself rebuying back into EOS. But I need to remove my ego and take a look at the facts and the statistics and the charts. And that's what we're going to do in this video. And actually, I want to dedicate the first minute of this video to the trolls out there. It's really amazing what happens when you sell a cryptocurrency and you share that information online. Every single EOS sell I have ever made in my entire trading history has been at profit. Back two years ago when I sold some EOS for Bitcoin, massive profits. Back in November when I sold some EOS for Ethereum, massive profits. Back just in January when I sold some EOS for Ethereum and Bitcoin, again, massive profits. And you probably didn't realize that because I sold the EOS for USD and I held it for a day or two, just a couple days, and I set a buy order for Ethereum super low, and it got filled at a 30% discount. And I set a buy order for Bitcoin super low, and that got filled at a 25% discount. I actually got a massive profit off those trades. And just to give you an idea of some of the numbers, when I sold the EOS for USD, Ethereum was priced at $1,380. When the order got filled the next day, it was $909. That's like, what, $400 difference? of a decrease in the Ethereum price, massive profits on that trade. And for the Bitcoin trade, it was at like 40,000 when I sold it and it was 32,000 when I rebought it three days later. Massive profits on that trade. So I managed to take my EOS trade and make it even more profitable. And what I've done is I basically rebought 100% of my EOS holdings. I'm exactly back where I was pre-November, but this time I've skimmed off the top those Ethereum and Bitcoin profits. And as a side note, that would not have been possible if it wasn't for the fact that I get 0% on my capital gains trades here in Puerto Rico. That enabled me to make those trades and come out on top. And I'm happy to have that little cushion of profits on the side that I made basically trading along the way. And so you'll see on your screen here a bunch of chicken scratch. Um, this was kind of my first drawing. I actually saved the first drawing I did that made me realize that I should actually rebuy into EOS. And this is it right here. And I'm going to redraw it for you. But you'll notice this curve here. This is kind of key. This is the key curve that I observed. And so let's dive into this freshly. So what do you notice about this chart when you look at it here? Well, we'll notice that we peaked out around $22 way back like three years ago. And we've never seen anything close to that ever since. I do think that we're going to see that again, and I'll explain why. But the difference between that peak and the bottom here is just massive. The gap here, the divergence between the top and the bottoms, so even if you take this local bottom right here, the size of this is just huge. And we move forward a little bit, and you'll notice that it drops in size. The divergence between the peak and the valleys gets smaller. And so we'll start forming this kind of bowl shape. And again, it drops even smaller. This is the volatility reducing over time, over a massive three-year wedge. As some people called it, this is like a giant wedge like this. That's like a giant three-year wedge. And you'll notice again, the volatility drops. This is getting more recent. This is around September of 2020. And again, the volatility has dropped. Every successive valley and rise has been a smaller and smaller volatility, decreasing volatility. And we see that even more recently, it got even smaller right here. And then suddenly it popped right here, the moment of popping. And it hit this high, which was higher than it has seen in a while. This is about $5 probably or $6. Right now we're at about $4 currently for EOS. And you'll notice that the low is higher than the previous lows as well. And so this right here, I would consider the popping point. This was around late January in hindsight, but we didn't really know that until more recently with this recent price action right here. And so this is why I think that we have seen a technical turn of events for EOS. And I want to let you guys know that this is a purely 100% 
technical rebuy into EOS. This is based 100% on technical indicators because if it wasn't for these technical indicators, I would not be rebuying my EOS. I know that Dan is back. I know that some of the DeFi on EOS has gone vertical and those things are awesome, but those things alone were not enough to get me to rebuy in because I still have the same issues with some of the governance and things that I've mentioned in the past. Those things still exist. However, I also look at the technical indicators. And from what I see on the technical side of things is the reason why I bought back in. And you know, it's not an easy thing to do, especially when you share this with the world like I do. You know, I share all my trades with everybody. You'll see what at least I'm thinking and why I'm doing this. And I'm being transparent about this. So you don't think that I'm trying to like trade behind your backs or make moves sneaky and like, oh, I said I'm selling, but I'm actually buying. No, I'm 100% doing this out in the open, fully transparent because that's how I roll. I am transparent and I'm honest about everything that I see. That's why some people don't like me because I call out the negatives, but I also call out the positives. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the positives for the technicals that I see for EOS. And to me, this is extremely bullish because it marks the turn of the direction of EOS on this USD chart. Now we're going to take a look at the EOS to Ethereum chart as well because it's quite different. It paints quite a different picture. And this is most importantly the chart that I've been trading on because when I made my cells, they were like here and here and things like that. So if I'm gonna do a comparison, I need to do it in the currency that I'm trading with. So for me, this is even more important. So for the USD side, it's looking bullish. It looks like we broke out of a bearish trend. We've seen a reversal to the upside and I see massive upside because of this especially due to the sheer three-year nature of this decline. By the way, as a side note, the volume is looking very healthy. We see this basically uptrending volume, very slightly, but still uptrending volume, massive volume. It's not like it's piddling out like in this area right here. We're actually seeing very strong volume as well. So when we see the price going up and we see the volume going up and remaining strong, to me, that's a very strong indicator. Now let's hop back over to here. So this is the EOS Ethereum chart, again, over the same period of time. And we saw it kind of take this sort of shape like this, a curve in the opposite direction. And what do we notice? We notice that it peaked out and it has never looked back since. EOS, as far as priced in Ethereum, has never been as good of a price as it was at the beginning of 2019. It's just been down, 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 down. Until the point where right now, let me draw a line here for you guys. We are essentially at the bottom of where we started. We're actually bouncing off that lower support line. And we've bounced off it, I would say, once right here and almost touching it right here, but we've gone up a little bit. And if you zoom in, you'll see that actually this is quite a bit higher than right here. And for all we know, I could be off on this Ethereum chart. Maybe we have more to go. Who's to say that this is the end? But I don't think it's personally likely that we'll go below this support line, just being as strong as it is and as long held as it is. And the fact that we just bounced off it after three years. I think that this bodes well for this being the actual bottom. And so with that in mind, I think that this is a likely place for the EOS Ethereum trading pair to turn around as well. So we have two bullish indicators. We have EOS bouncing off this lower support line for Ethereum, and we have EOS making a reversal and setting lows that are higher than before on the EOS USD chart. These are both bullish in my opinion and with volume that is increasing and steady. And so I asked myself this question and this is how I made the decision. Right now, do I feel it's more likely or less likely for EOS to gain not only in terms of USD, but also against Ethereum and Bitcoin? And I think that it is actually considerably more likely at this point in time for EOS to gain in value relative to both USD, Ethereum, as well as Bitcoin. So I do think we're going to see a reversal and we're going to see the price start to head up. How high we head up, I don't know. Will we get all the way back to here? 
Probably not, but who knows? Anything's possible. But you know what? If right now we're down here and we make it even up to just here, halfway to where we were, that's a massive value increase if I convert my Ethereum back to EOS. And so that is why I have done it. Again, this is a completely 100% technical move on my part. I'm not doing this based on any news. I'm not doing this based on Dan Larimer coming back, although I think that's great. I'm not doing this based on bullish coming in the future, but that's also good to have down the pipeline. So it's a purely technical move right now. I think that we've bottomed out and we're heading up. And I want to give a shout out to some positive people because there are lots of you out there that are so supportive and so friendly and kind, and you don't allow emotions of what coins you hold to get in way of our internet friendship. You know, I know we've never met before, but I do consider this a relationship with all of you guys out there who subscribe and follow me. And so, you know, the friendly ones, you know, I really cherish that. This is from Mr. T, CoinRunner7. He says, EOS community misses the Colony T Crypto EOS Mega Updates. So thank you very much. I don't know if I'll get back into doing EOS Mega Updates. I won't rule anything out, but here I am doing another video on EOS and I never thought I would see myself doing that. So anything's possible. Thanks, Mr. T. And here's YC Blockchain. He says, good to see you back in the EOS community. And this was after I shared some recent DeFi bullish news on EOS. So thank you very much. You guys, attitudes like this, positive, I love it. And for the final portion of this video, we're gonna to touch upon Dan Larimer returning to governance on EOS. We're gonna talk about bullish DeFi projects on EOS and their moonshotting recently. And we're gonna talk about my concerns that still remain for the EOS blockchain, just to give you a fully balanced video. So let's start with something bullish here. A lot of the DeFi projects on EOS have started taking off recently, and that includes specifically the Box token for DeFi Box, the DAD token for the DAP account DAO, and the IQ token for Everpedia. And let's take a look at these charts. These are just amazing. This is the past one month. And so for the DAD token, we went from under 0 0.04 EOS per DAD token to over 0.12, that's at least a 3x. And I think it kept climbing after this chart. The box token for DeFi box went from about 1.3 EOS per box token, which by the way, I just happened to buy a boatload of down here to lower my cost average. And now it's at 4.5 EOS and climbing, per box token, massive profits on that. Lastly, we have Everpedia's IQ token, which is going to be not only for Everpedia, but for their future prediction markets. And that's gone from, I can't even see it here, 0 0.001, on this chart to 0 0.004, so at least a 4x for the IQ token. And if I had to take a guess, I would say that the fact that these are rising so bullishly coincides with the fact that EOS itself as a trading pair on the USD charts, and I think soon for the Ethereum charts, has changed this direction and this course of action to be a more bullish trend. And something very cool for DeFi Box, I'm just super bullish about DeFi Box. I'm so glad I held that and I didn't panic sell when it crashed. DeFi Box recently released a development timeline and a plan for some new features. And I skimmed through it, and this is my takeaway of some of the most bullish aspects for DeFi Box. It's going to solve impermanent loss. That is a feature that Bancor was bringing to its platform. Well, DeFi Box is going to be bringing that to DeFi Box. Well, DeFi Box is going to be bringing that to DeFi Box. And that's something I requested in the past a long time ago. I did not expect it to be implemented. And so it looks like they're going to work on that. That's super awesome. That means that when you put in liquidity for a liquidity pool, you won't lose tokens on either side of that liquidity pool. And they've managed a clever way to balance it so you don't make a loss. That's amazing. And I think that will lead to a lot more people putting liquidity in platforms like DeFi Box when they have protection against impermanent loss. Another thing that I'm super bullish about on DeFi Box is multi-chain capabilities. They didn't specify whether that was EOS IO multi-chain capabilities or cross-chain to like Ethereum and Polkadot and Cardano. I'm hoping for the latter, but I'll be happy with any cross-chain multi-chain capabilities. Next, we have listings on more tier one exchanges. So DeFi Box is taking note to get itself listed on some of the major exchanges out there with massive trading volume. I hope we see things like Coinbase or Binance, 
Huobi, et cetera. You know, we really should because we have BPs running nodes on EOS from exchanges like Huobi and Binance and Bitfinex. So the least they can do is add the freaking trading pairs for some of the EOS tokens. And next up, we have even further box token reduction. If you remember about three months ago, we had a vote, a governance vote, to reduce the supply from 100 million tokens down to 5 million total box tokens. That's a 20x decrease in the total number of DeFi box tokens. And so that's amazing in itself. And I think that's largely why we've seen such a bullish price increase for box recently. But we're going to see even further algorithmic box token reduction. And that's what they said in their article. It's not just reducing the supply, it's an algorithm that reduces the supply. So we'll see what that is. I'm guessing that'll be based on burning fees every transaction, but that's just a total guess. All right, guys, now that I've rebought into EOS, you're probably wondering a few things. For example, what about my proxies? Those remain terminated. I'm not going to be returning to becoming a proxy manager. I didn't feel that the reward was great enough for the involvement of my time, and I didn't make any money off of it, and so I will not be returning to running a proxy. I would rather leave that to other people, other individuals who maybe make a profit or they find it worth their while. Um, another thing I want to answer is, in regards to my longevity of holding EOS, I look at this strictly as a technical play, and as such, when we reach the bull run peak, and when I perceive we're at the top for EOS, I will be selling 100% of my EOS tokens, and I will not be holding any more through the following bull runs after that. And that actually goes the same for some of my other platforms. The same goes for one inch strong token from the strong block team. I recently bought some of that. I think that's incredibly bullish. Um, the same goes for the box token, dad token, dap token, vig token, and all of those I consider to be tokens I sell 100% of at the next bull run peak. And the reason for that is relatively simple. It's based on the fact that low market cap coins tend to see the sharpest and steepest corrections when the bear market happens. Bitcoin already has a pretty big market correction. It has like an 85 to 95% correction from its peaks down to the bear market. But as you drop down the market cap ranks of coin market cap listings, the coins see even greater decreases during bear markets. So Ethereum will see an even greater drop than Bitcoin most likely. And a coin like EOS or DeFi Box or DAP or Strong Token or all these tokens or One Inch, they will likely see even greater drops down to their new floors because they just don't have that much volume going on. And so that's the reason it's purely technical once again, why I will be most likely selling 100% of my EOS tokens. So as I've said, the reason I bought into EOS is 100% technical. One big remaining issue I've had for years now is that exchange BPs vote with user tokens. I have not been happy with that for years. I am still not happy with that. I think that there is collusion going on. In fact, I know that there's collusion going on. I know that exchanges like Huobi and Bitfinex and all these guys vote with user tokens and they vote themselves into power into such strength that they cannot be removed. And to this day, I am not okay with that. I do not like that. And I think that needs to be fixed. I think that unfortunately, they're so entrenched at this point, they can't be removed directly. And I think that that has to be done with things like one token, one vote and staking pools and perhaps any other ideas Dan may have in regards to helping governance. But Dan is back now, and we'll get into that in a second. And that's bullish in its own right. But I want to make it abundantly clear that I remain displeased with any block producer, be it an exchange or not, who supports the act of voting with user tokens without their explicit opt-in consent. And I need to see that fixed for me to feel like I love EOS 100% again. Because to me, that was sort of the point that broke my heart with EOS, was the fact that user tokens don't even really matter anymore and it's all in exchanges hands it's really delegated exchange proof of stake if you want to be honest about it it's not delegated proof of stake the delegation is now in the exchanges control. So that's all I'll harp on that. I just want to make it clear that my stance on that has not changed. Jay Tyler asked, hey, Colin, do you see yourself returning to EOS now that Dan has returned to the community? And I said, I don't consider that a decisive reason to return. Most of what Dan is proposing is highly experimental. I hope it is a success, but there is no guarantee. 
the things that do matter to me are things like one token, one vote, staking pools, and block one properly funding DAP development on EOS as they agreed to do and as they have broken their word on. They promised to do $1 billion into the ecosystem, and they have just found all manner of ways to weasel out of that and to put it into Ethereum and to say things like the EOS DAP has to make an attempt, a valiant attempt at using the EOS blockchain or EOS IO. But if they don't make it work out and they end up on Ethereum, then it's okay, we'll still fund them with all that money that we got from the EOS ICO. Eh, wrong answer, block one. You need to fund it back to the EOS token holders who made you what you are. People just want you to buy coins you know, as the equivalent of being an, an investment or tokens as the equivalent of an investment, but it's not, right? You don't participate in the equity. The, the tokens yeah. you know, may or may not do well, but the equity in the company, if the application does well, will. And so there's going to be a little bit of that conflict. And so will, will it turn out where you get revenue shares? You know, that'll be the interesting part to see how that plays out. If you're going to use tokens as a way of representing, quote unquote, you know, governance and ownership, then you're going to have to share some of the upside in terms of profit sales or whatever it may be. You know, if they're going to write applications and they're going to try to sell those applications, it's going to require, you know, investment at some level and people are going to want to return. People want some level of return that reflects the business underlying it. And lastly, let's end off talking about Dan Larimer coming back. So quite a surprise. Basically, he left in early January. He then released his new book, and now he's back on EOS, and he's created his own Telegram group. So if you want to join that, you can follow what he's doing and saying. He's had discussions with the token holders so far, and Dan is basically proposing an implementation of what he talks about in his book, which is a new form of governance, like a hierarchical form of governance, where you vote in with small groups a leader, and then those leaders in small groups vote in a new leader, and so on, until you reach the top where you have the alpha of leadership, so to speak. And it sounds interesting, but like many things that Dan Larimer does, it sounds highly experimental. You know, to be honest, this is how I look at it. Many things on EOS did not work out the way that Dan or Block One or Brendan Bloomer thought they would work out. For example, the Constitution, the original EOS Constitution, did not work out. It was not enforceable. So we now have the EOS User Agreement, the replacement for the Constitution. Another thing that didn't work out was 30 votes per token. That got manipulated to hell. And now we need one token, one vote. We needed one token, one vote from the start. But now we're trying to crawl back to that place and we can't quite get there. So 30 votes per token was also a failure. And now we have exchanges voting with user funds. That's also been a failure. We needed things like staking pools from the very beginning. So many things we would redo if we could go back and we have the benefit of hindsight now, no doubt. And I feel it's fairly safe to say that EOS has been a big experiment, really from the start to the finish. Everything about it has been experimental. And so when I hear something like Dan coming back, I think that's awesome. And that's probably most bullish for price. You know, it's like Ethereum losing its Vitalik. You know, it's just not a confident thing to have. And now Dan is free of the constraints of block one, which is awesome. Dan is free to do and say anything he wants without feeling like he's being held to some regulations or restrictions that block one puts on what he can say or do. He can now create whatever he wants. And he does have plans for creating a totally free, censorship-free, social media platform, a sort of Twitter and Facebook replacement. I think it's called Clarion OS. And so you can find out more about that in his Telegram channel if you wish. But I guess the point I want to make is that so much on EOS so far has been highly experimental. It has had great success and throughput. It hasn't reached its 1 million transactions per second. It's reached at most 4,000 transactions per second. But it has been generally a success. And so with the technical fundamentals that I said at the beginning of the video, lining up right, that's why I bought back in, purely technical. But Dan's new proposal for governance on EOS, I take with a grain of salt, not because 
I don't want to believe that he can make it happen because I do, and I think it's awesome that he's trying new things, but because I think that block producers on EOS have such a stranglehold on governance as it is, it's going to be very difficult to uproot that and change that. And I think that, again, it's an experiment. We don't even know if it's going to work. It's like Dan is using EOS as his experiment of governance to see if it works. And if he can prove that it works, then maybe he'll get some validity in the real world with his Equitable Animals book, you know, in regards to actual policy politics. And so it's a testing ground. I really feel that EOS is being used as the testing ground. There's no harm in it being done because we already have governance on EOS and this is just an experiment. But I don't think that Dan coming back to try to create this experimental governance on EOS is a reason to be bullish about EOS. I think that it's a nice to have and a let's wait and see. But like some of the things that Dan has done, they don't always work out the way that he intends them to. And so we'll have to wait and see. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this paints a clear picture of why I got back into EOS and I made a profit doing so by trading intelligently on the way down with the EOS price. And now that I've seen a reversal in the trend on the USD and the Ethereum charts, I'm looking at EOS price moves to go super vertical in the coming months and I do strongly feel that we're going to see EOS make up and regain a lot of the lost ground that it has in the past several years. It may not make up all of it but it only needs to make up some of it to make this trade worthwhile. So thanks for taking the time to listen to this video. Please share with anyone you think that will appreciate this and I hope you have a fantastic day.